Hello and welcome to a PowerPoint presentation uh, on the GCSE options for Year 10 next year. Uh, before we move on with the PowerPoint, uh, just a couple of instructions. To move the slides uh, backwards and forwards, uh, you can use the up and down arrow keys. And when you want to hear the audio, then on each slide you will notice uh, a little speaker symbol if you hover the mouse over that symbol, then you should see the little play arrow, which if you press, uh, should start the audio. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on. So my aim uh, is twofold in this section. Uh, firstly, to give you an overview of the GCSE timetable, which is split into uh, three parts, your core subjects, your optional subjects, and then your games time. Uh, and the second part is to give you an understanding of how I go about uh, setting out the uh, option blocks. Uh, and also with that, uh, hopefully an understanding of the limitations uh, that can arise. So let's, uh, let's start off and look at your core subjects. So your core subjects are uh, English, Maths, and a science course. So let's look at each one of those in a little bit more detail. The majority of students will take two uh, English GCSE qualifications, English language and English literature. Uh, they are both taught uh, at the same time. So within lessons, you may not necessarily know that you are uh, doing the language or the literature component, uh, but you will end up with uh, two exams, one to give you English language and one to give you English literature. Uh, for some students, uh, it may not be appropriate to, to carry on with the, the literature exam, um, and in that case, the focus will be on English language. And for students whose English uh, is their second language, um, then they may actually prefer to follow uh, an English as an additional language qualification, uh, which is done through the Cambridge Exam Board. All students take a mathematics course worth uh, one GCSE. However, for uh, students um, that enjoy their maths uh, and have a talent in it, uh, there's a second GCSE that's available, uh, which is a further mathematics qualification. All students take a combined science qualification, which is worth two GCSEs. Uh, it contains elements of all three of the sciences, so biology, physics and chemistry, uh, which are just combined to give one qualification, which is worth the two GCSEs. Uh, for students that show a particular aptitude and ability in the science, then in year 11, there is the option to study the three separate sciences. So each science is then uh, a separate GCSE, which would give a total of three GCSEs. So that's your core subjects. Uh, from those different combinations, you would have a minimum of uh, four GCSEs up to a maximum of seven GCSEs. So those are your compulsory ones. You can't do much about avoiding those. Uh, so let's move on to your optional subjects. OK, so you now have uh, the option to choose four subjects uh, from the range of 12 that are available to you. Now, you may already 
have an idea of what you want to do in the future. So uh, these uh, choices may be quite straightforward. Um, but if you're yet to make up your mind on, uh, on what you want to do in the future, um, then you may want to consider trying to keep your options um, as, as broad as possible. So this may involve having sort of one art subject, um, a sort of business IT group, uh, and then maybe a language or so. Um, but out of these 12, you need to be able to choose four of them. Now, alongside this uh, PowerPoint, you should have also received uh, the options booklet. And now inside that, there is uh, a lot more information on each of the actual subjects, uh, which gives you a little bit more detail on what is involved uh, and how they are uh, examined, etc. One of the option blocks may be put aside for learning support, uh, but before choosing this option, uh, you should have had an initial discussion with uh, Mrs English. Okay, so you've chosen your uh, four subjects, uh, but you will have noticed that there are a total of 12 um, and there's only four slots. So this means that in each slot, there has to be three subjects. Uh, in the next step, we look at how I go about uh, assigning which subjects in which blocks uh, and try and give as many of you as possible the option choices that you uh, have asked for. Okay, the process starts off with a free choice. Uh, by that I mean uh, I would like to know which four subjects uh, that you would like to study to GCSE. Um, and alongside those four, uh, I would also like to know one other subject which uh, you would be happy to study if you were unable to uh, get one of your four initial choices. Once I've got your choices, I then set up what is called a clash table. Uh, and in that table, I put in everybody's choices, all their subjects, and then have a look at which are the most popular uh, and which combinations of subjects are the most popular. Uh, we'll have a look at an example of a clash table in the next slide, um, which will hopefully highlight some of the issues that can arise once I've put all your data into the clash table. Once I've completed the clash table, I will then look to make a first draft of the option blocks, putting three subjects into each one of the uh, options. There's now a period of discussion. Uh, for many of you, you'd have had your four uh, subjects, so you would be happy with your result of that, uh, and for the majority of you, you would have uh, your three, and perhaps with your your fifth one, which you were uh, happy to have if you couldn't get your fourth one, uh, then you will have all four of your subjects as well. For a minority, and rarely, you may find that uh, if you were the only person that wanted to study a certain combination of subjects, you may find that uh, your combination uh, is not possible. So this is where we will have a discussion and see if there is some way that we can uh, um, move subjects around uh, in, in order for you to, uh, to achieve what you want. So once we've had a discussion and we've tried to resolve any issues uh, that have arisen, uh, I would then publish a final draft of the uh, 
uh, the option blocks uh, and it is then uh, your chance to, to choose your final uh, options uh, around which we will then build the year 10 timetable. So let's go back and have a look at uh, the, the clash table, which is really at the, the core of the, the process uh, and have a look at one uh, that was generated a couple of years ago uh, and also uh, identify some of the issues uh, that uh, the clash table uh, highlights. So this is an example of a clash table um, and shows all the responses, all the free choices of students from a couple of years back. Now the numbers that are in the blue boxes are the number of students that have chosen to do that subject. So we can see for example that 12 students chose to do art, 7 to do business, 3 design, 5 drama, um, right the way down to 1 for German, uh, 10 for music for example. The numbers that go across and vertically are students, the numbers of students that chose to do uh, the other subject in combination with art. So for example, if we go across and start with art, we can see out of those 12 students, three of them wanted to do business, one wanted to do design, four wanted to do French, three geography, and uh, nobody wanted to do German and art. Uh, while five art students also wanted to do uh, sports studies. So hopefully you can see that initially we already have a problem. I need to get alongside art, I need to get two other subjects into the block that is with art. Now, looking across art, German would obviously be um, uh, the obvious choice because art, uh, nobody who's doing art wants to do German. So having art and German in the same block, uh, there's not an issue. But then I've got to put another subject in with art and German. And there we can start to see where the problems arise. Um, I don't want to put music in with art because that would mean seven students wouldn't be able to do art and music. So I'm stuck with a choice between design and ICT because then only one student um, would be disappointed with their choice. Now I need to make that decision for all three other uh, option blocks. Um, and that takes a bit of, uh, that takes a bit of working out. So here's the, the, the limitations that we have with giving students a free choice uh, and why you need uh, an element of flexibility in, in your choices. Okay, so how much time do we have to, uh, to, to get this all sorted? Uh, well, I'd like your free choice as soon as possible. That's your four subjects plus your fifth subject that you would be happy to, uh, to study if you were unable to uh, study one of your four main choices. Uh, once I have those, I can then start to put the clash table together. That would allow us to get the first draft um, and then any discussions that need to be uh, uh, need to be had from that uh, from that first draft, uh, and I'd like to do that around about the third week of the uh, the, the new term, uh, whether we're back at school or, or not. Uh, this will then allow us to have any discussions, um, draw up the final draft, uh, and then get that out to you. Um, for your final choices, which um, I'd like to have done by the middle of next term, so round about uh, the May half term break. Uh, well, I hope this has been uh, informative um, and has at least give you a better idea of the steps that I take uh, in order to take um, your views into account to try and give you the subjects 
that you would like to study uh, and also highlight um, some of the issues that, uh, that we may have a little bit further down the line. Um, if you would like any further information, uh, please drop me an email or if we're still back on Teams, um, then if you'd like to set up a chat, then, uh, then please do that uh, and I can talk you through the options uh, again. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.